knew this place was a major fixer-upper, and we just don't have any money left. Then you spent $25,000 just to have the nice stuff. We justify it as an investment, and then we think about how to repay it. When the bills come in, I just put them in a drawer, and I don't know what happens to them after that. It'll cost you almost $19,000 in interest by the time you're done. What? I'm Leona, I'm 30 years old, and I'm a publicity specialist. My name is Mohammed, I'm 31, and I'm an engineer. I've been married to Mohammed for two years. He's probably the most romantic man I've ever met. We knew we were gonna marry each other, like, instantly. He loves buying me things. He's like a dream guy. Well, you wanna keep your wife happy, right? Happy wife, happy home. We decided to buy the house we're in now because what I really wanted was to buy a place with character. It's hugely important to me. For the most part, most homes are just cookie cutter homes, carbon copies of each other. As soon as we walked into this house, I just, I just fell in love with it. It's 3,200 square feet. It's big, it's beautiful, there's lots of space. There's a huge, lovely backyard. We're backing right onto a river. There's pathways. It was just my dream house. A lot of renovations got into the house. I think the renovations were close to $45,000 so far. One month after we moved in, we went to Thailand, Cambodia, Syria, and Lebanon for a month. The house wasn't even finished, and we just like took off. We looked for Persian carpets in Lebanon. We kept upping up the quality uh, until we got the best three Persian carpets in the store. It was really fun spending a lot of money in beautiful exotic foreign places, like buying silk curtains from Thailand. I'm not comfortable with the debt that we do have. I'd like to pay it down at a more aggressive pace. We have a lot of things that we have to fix right away, and we just don't have any money left to fix them. I know it's not a good scene. Like, I know that we have a lot of debt, and I kind of, like, don't want to know. If Leona looks at the budget, the risk is a, an emotional overreaction. I, I think uh, the budget for the house should be done by one person. Mohammed's very worried about the debt. Like, it plagues his life. The quick way out of this is to sell it for the value, take that money, pay off all the debt, to just sell it, I think it would rip something out of us that you couldn't just repair. To sell the house, I think, would be very devastating for not just Leona, but for myself as well. We decided to postpone having kids until we felt we were financially stable. If we want to take that next, next step, then things have to change. This month, I'll help this couple protect their number one asset, their home. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt and how to balance it all while keeping a roof over their heads. Young and affluent, Leon and Mohammed have been spending like there's no tomorrow. They've furnished their dream house, while Leona's turned a blind eye to the bills. But there are cracks in their walls and cracks in their finances. They're about to discover that their debt has a very real cost. Time to start paying. Hi, Gil Voss Oxlade. Hi, Leona. Nice to meet you, nice Leona. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mohammed. Nice Hi, to Mohammed. Meet you. Nice to meet you. If you don't mind, the first thing I'd like to do is just drop my bag and have a quick look around. Come on in. Great. Wow. This is beautiful. And these curtains are all the curtains you got in Thailand? Yes. So they're all raw silk. They're all raw silk. And yeah. I know the carpets are handmade. Yes. Persian. That's right. Uh, running about $12,000. Approximately. Yes. Yep. Was the kitchen like this when you got here? We bought the fridge. And then these are the stairs that need a railing, right? Yes. We have to finish certain parts of this house um, to be able to be covered fully for insurance, like adding a banister down a staircase that nobody ever uses. Have you priced out the railing? I think it was about $700. How much was the vacation you took right after you closed the house? Eight to $9,000. Ah, so now we know where your priorities lie. At what point do you stop spending because it's already enough? I think we have stopped spending and now have been paying off that. So the last six months, you can say about four or 5,000 have been paid off. At that rate, it will take you 10 years to get rid of all of your debt? That's outrageous. I, I don't, I almost can't believe that that's correct, but hey, I, what do I know? I've got my head in the sand, right? I'd like to see those Well, you're doing about four or $5,000 every six months, so that's about $10,000 a year, and you have about $100,000. That's right. 
you know you're agreeing with me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a showdown. Yeah. So did I just win the first one? I think you have. Yeah. yeah. And yet, if you don't know what's going on, how will you know when you're actually at risk? I won't. So sell the house. That would be heart-wrenching for us to have to sell the house. Well, you might have to do it. I'm going to show you the last six months' worth of numbers that you sent me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you stopped spending. Ready? Go. You buy a house for $386,000 and you put $20,000 down. Mm -hmm. And then you immediately get a $25,000 loan. So some moronic lender decides to give you more than the value of the house. This is, yes. And then you pay mortgage loan insurance because, of course, your down payment is less than 20%. So on a $386,000 house, you automatically owe $401,000. Yeah. And then you went out and spent on credit just to have the nice stuff. Chandeliers, about $1,200. You put in some trees to act like fencing. There's that beautiful bedroom furniture. Mm -hmm. You pay $2,600 for a fridge. It's the best fridge you can I buy. I bet it's the best fridge you can buy for a total of $48,687.69. Here you sit at 30 years old yes. with a big honking mortgage and $100,000 worth of consumer debt. See this $12,000 in credit card debt right here? Mm -hmm. Your current payment? It'll cost you almost $19,000 in interest by the time you're done. Mm -hmm. What? When all is said and done, are you really prepared to pay another $50,000 in interest on uh, all this debt? Absolutely not. No. no, it's disgusting. You're sure? Yeah. To put it into a perspective that makes it as serious as it actually is, you're overspending every month by almost $4,000. And if you keep it up in five years, you'll owe $1.1 million, three times what this house is worth. How long do you think you'll have to delay having children if you're $1.1 million in debt? <laughs> Indefinitely. That's not going to happen. We're not going to have children if we're that much in debt. It's not going to happen. I need from you a commitment that you will do whatever I say over the next few weeks so that I can show you a way out of this. Do I have your commitment? You do. I'm on board. 100%. Yeah, Mohammed. Full commitment. So what I'm going to do over the next few weeks, I'm going to give you a series of challenges to do. You do the challenges to my satisfaction, I'll give you up to $5,000 to help you take care of this problem. But if you don't do the challenges, you don't get the money. If you don't have the right attitude, you don't get the money. Understood. OK. We're going to put the things you want in the context of what you can afford. We're going to figure out what else needs to be done to this house and put it on a plan. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get you making a debt repayment plan together so you both know exactly where you stand in this whole process. Coming up, Leona stands her ground. I know you don't like that, but I don't like living life like that. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Mohammed and Leona spent the past year renovating their century home. It's big, it's beautiful, there's lots of space. My dream house. They did it all with credit, and thanks to their extravagant tastes, their debt's getting out of control. You pay $2,600 for a fridge? It's the best fridge you can I buy. I bet it's the best fridge you can buy. Mohammed thinks he's managing the money on his own. If Leona looks at the budget, the risk is a, an emotional overreaction. But it's only smoke and mirrors. Mr. I can take control of this and fix it myself. You had your chance, and now it's my turn. For the next month, these homeowners will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll compete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I'll reward them with thousands of dollars to pay down their debt. No changes, no money. Before I tell you what the money is about, you've got to give me the plastic. Good boy. And so here comes the bad news. I'm going to cut your variable spending by 78%. Oh my God, <laughs> okay. Instead of the $9,100 you have been spending, you'll have just over $1,900. You'll have $200 a week for food. That's a lot of money for two people. Yes, it is. You'll have $117.50 for transportation, $82.50 for entertainment, $50 a week for clothing and gifts, and $42.50 for other. You have a cat? Two. This is cat food, this is medical, whatever you may have to get that's not by prescription. So we come to your first challenge. If you want to stay in this house, you have to fix the money. And so that's where we're going to start, OK? OK. You have to make a debt repayment plan that gets you completely consumer debt free 
within three years or less and make the rest of the budget balance. You need to talk about it as you're doing it. I don't want him saying, well, we're gonna have to do this, we have to do this, and you're just going, yeah. If you think it's more important to do one thing and he thinks it's more important to do another, you fight it out. 950 is what we make per month? Yeah. I've supplied them with mini Persian carpets to use this currency. Coming up with $3,000 a month to retire their debt shouldn't be too much of a squeeze for Mohammed and Leona. So let's just look at the current bills. Yeah. But I thought if we do like the most important pieces per month first, okay. like living expenses. But what's proving uncomfortable for Mohammed is giving up control over their life spending. Entertainment, I mean restaurants and... She gives us like 200 bucks a month. I still like going out, but we can go to like... I would say keep it at 200 a month. No, let's cut it down <laughs> to 150. We can't just keep living the same no, lifestyle, no. right? You know this big blank I left here, the travel blank? I want to have a, like maybe a little bit. No, 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 no. The toughest sacrifice by far uh, is not traveling for the next couple of years. Emergency fund? Remember I talked to you about this the other night and you're like, oh, we don't need an emergency fund. I'm not going to spend money on savings if my interest rate on loans is that much higher. No. Yeah, I'm no, going to put... You're, you're double budgeting. No, well, I'm going to put it down there, emergency fund. I don't like living life like that. I like to have a little bit of a backup. Let's put like... A hundred bucks, that's pretty lame. So you lose 10% and you make two, three percent. I want to put something into an emergency fund, okay? So how did you find the whole budget making exercise? You just shut up for a minute. <laughs> um, I had a bit of a battle with Mohammed. For me to go in and say, no, let's look at it this way, a new way, yes. was very difficult for right. him. Right. So Can you see that this is as much an issue of communication as it is of numbers? You need to find a common ground. And I think we did. We did compromise on uh, our approach. You have no money for vacation, really? We'll still do things. We just won't go on big trips. We'll do things locally. You know, we can be creative. That's great. Yeah. And then we come to my favorite category of all, home maintenance. And what do you put in the home maintenance category? Nothing. Really? Well, that was an emergency fund that was six. No, no. An emergency fund is the money you have in case you get sick, you lose your job, crap happens, serious crap. And you only have $100 a month going into your emergency fund. That's not enough. Oh, that's because we have debt. And I'd rather tackle the debt than save money. And where do you get the money to deal with the emergency? We put it on a credit card and then, Thank you. then, then we're in trouble. This is what I was going to say. <laughs> now that Mohammed understands what an emergency fund is for, it's time to talk about that missing category in their budget, home maintenance. A reasonable amount to set aside for home maintenance is about 3% of the value of the home each year. For Mohammed and Leona, that works out to about $600 a month. You're gonna be working in the garden this week. You know that $600 that's gonna go into home maintenance? Yeah. That's what you have to spend on this challenge. I'm gonna send you someone to help tour you around. I want you to go and look at the various aspects of gardens that you think you might want to integrate into your garden. Okay. Make a plan for what the backyard's gonna eventually look like. And then comes the sweat equity, because I want you to implement one aspect of the new garden. The risks with a project like this is that Mohammed will get his hands on it and will end up with something really extravagant. <laughs> Money, 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 money. If you want to stay in this house, you have to fix the money. When it came to Mohammed and Leona's dream house, money was no object, except that it was all on credit. We justify it as an investment, uh, and then we think about how do we pay it. Mohammed was in charge, and Leona blissfully unaware. When the bills come in, I just put them in a drawer, and I don't know what happens to them after that. I've got them talking about the money and sharing responsibility for the budget. I don't like living life like that. I like to have a little bit of a backup. Their next challenge involves some long-term planning, as opposed to your way, which is just, let's just do it all and put it on credit. If they can accomplish all of my challenges, I'll give them up to $5,000 to pay down their debt. This week, they need to create a long-term plan for landscaping their yard and finish one element of it, spending no more than $600. So this is what uh, I envision for our place. I've sent professional landscape designer Dave to act as a consultant. So Mohammed has created some elaborate plans for the backyard. So you want to actually add an addition on here like a solarium? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, and then we take steps into a fire pit. 
the steps continue and get to a raised uh, gazebo area. Over that time, are you prepared to spend about $200,000 in this backyard? Uh, no. He had some grand ideas, but no concept of budget. To give them a much needed reality check, they toured some of Dave's projects. Just to kind of give you an eye opener about some of the costs involved, a stone patio, a custom carpentry work, a contained fire element, natural stepping stones through the lawn. The upper terraced area here gives a, a feeling of an outdoor living room experience. The next property included some of Mohammed's wish list items. Custom decking, stone pathways, a gazebo with hot tub. But it was the fire feature that got him going. This is awesome. Very interesting. So I have a budget of $600. Really? OK. Well, depending on Most of their $600 budget has to go to material. With this fire pit, we're, we're worried that we'll be way over budget. So what we've done is uh, come up with some creative ideas to bring down the cost. Mohammed sourced some stone from a construction site. Normally, we could pay around $800 to maybe $1,100 for that amount of stone. And we got it for uh, gas money. I, I did have a grand vision of things. And I, I think we, we need to change it up a little bit. So what we're trying to do is uh, build little by little bit by doing it ourselves and uh, being more resourceful. So you people have worked really hard this week. You carried some rocks. Lots of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of rocks. About 100 rocks or so, yeah. So, so what do you figure you ended up saving through the sweat equity? Yeah, at, at least a thousand. OK. Yeah. yeah. You have some things still to be done on this house for insurance purposes. The insurance company wants to remortar the exterior of the house. You've also had a little bit of trouble in terms of how you manage trades. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm at home most of the time when they come to visit, so it's not Mohammed there dealing with them, it's me. You're going to price out fixing the cracks in the wall. I'm gonna send you someone to help coach you through the process of how you manage trades. You will understand what role you have to take in it, and you will learn how to throw your weight around. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Mohammed and Leona were having a great time fixing up their dream home. Silk curtains from Thailand, handmade Persian rugs from Beirut. But while they focused on the sexy stuff, they let some of the must-do items slide. Spending $12,000 on carpets when you haven't bothered to fix the walls outside is a total travesty. Their final challenge is to get a quote for fixing cracks in the exterior walls required by the insurance company. Should anything happen, like a chunk falls out from this old house, I mean, it's an old house, things like that happen, we won't be covered. Like many homeowners, Leona's intimidated by contractors. I hate negotiating with tradesmen. They've jacked their prices up as soon as they see me, and I don't know what to do. Leona meets with contractor Betty Lau to get her top tips on dealing with trades. It's tough being a woman dealing with the trades. You feel intimidated that they come into your home and they will tell you what you can and cannot do. They'll often ask me, oh, well, just casually, what does your husband do? And when I say what he does, they, they know it's, it's a good career. Remember that the contractor prices the client, not the job. The only information that I would give them is we're really tight for money. You must tell the contractor that he's not the only quote, because what's going to happen is that he's going to think that he has the job and he's going to quote higher. Asking for referrals, asking for pictures. When Leona meets her contractor today, she should have a list of all the questions, her guideline as to uh, her expectations. Hi there, you must be Gino. Yes, I am. Hi, I'm Leona. Glad you could make it. Anything like you can see like it right cracks. there. Like any cracks, yeah, any visible yeah. cracks. Once you get that little crack, yeah. it's spiders everywhere. She was asking a lot of the right questions, like references, um, you know, pictures, timelines. Uh, if you go over a deadline, uh, you know, you got to pay a certain cost. Write up a quote for me. OK. Actually, she did pretty good. Thanks. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. I've got a quote now for the uh, mortar around the entire house. 1200 Our budget is 600 per month. So we could save up for that. <laughs> I'm really excited, actually. I, I feel much more confident. I feel empowered. I feel like I have the control. And I think that I'm actually going to save money in the future when we're dealing with people who have to fix our home. did a great job on the fire pit. Thank you. So did it actually come in on budget? We came under budget, I think. Oh, excellent. By about $50 or so. And how are you communicating with him now in terms of the money? 
better, actually. Yeah. So what would you say would be the biggest lesson you learned over the last few weeks? Well, the biggest one is that if we're actually working together and we're on the same page, we actually are going to be more successful paying down our debt. Right. Was this worthwhile for you? It's definitely worthwhile. Uh, we have better control of our finances. We know where each dollar is going. Yep. And then when it comes to the house, we actually budget uh, on a monthly basis. What a basis. concept, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's taken a home that we found really problematic, and by helping us with our budget, now we actually see uh, ways of fixing the home and still being comfortable living here. Well, when I got here, you were overspending by about $4,000 a month. Yeah. And you were sort of doing whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted, damn the money. Yeah. And eventually, it'll all take care of itself. <laughs> yeah, magically. And, yeah, exactly. And now you know that if you have a plan, you're much more likely to get from where you are to where you want to be. And you're on a debt repayment plan that will see you debt-free in three years or less. Mm -hmm. Our ultimate goal was to figure out our finances so we could move forward and have a family and what Gail has done is she's come in and really sort of put us on the right road to get to that to that goal. You went outside your comfort zone yeah. and you took a lot of guff from me <laughs> and so I have a little something something. Yes. <laughs> done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. Two months later, Mohammed and Leona found the money to finish the repairs needed to meet their insurance requirements. They're both committed to paying down the debt within three years so they can stay in the home they love and begin a family together. Best of all, Leona got to hear the three little words every woman wants to hear. I was wrong. Okay. <laughs>